everybody, it's Maya, and I usually do the news. Today, I am interviewing Lissa. She is an architect in Seattle. Um, I am in a weird environment. This is the Discovery Lab. It was previously the Discovery Lab. Now it is the Life Science Lab. And on the side, I do the news, but I've also been cleaning it up in here, and we're getting really excited for our opening date on June 15th. So let's jump into the interview. You are currently an architect with us. What kind of project do you work on? I work on multifamily projects here in Seattle, so urban high-rises for the most part, so big, tall buildings. You do the insides, right, where people live? Yep. I'm an interior architect is my specialty. So we focus on, yeah, apartments and condominiums and how people live. That's fine. So what kind of, what is the project you are most proud of accomplishing and why? Uh, my favorite project I've worked on is called uh, 2020 Jackson, which is an affordable housing project. So because housing is so expensive here in Seattle, I think it's really important to contribute affordable housing stock so people of all different backgrounds and socioeconomic status can afford to live in the city. We have some of those. We have an affordable complex in Ashland, and it's really pretty. So it's, it's so pretty good. Pretty building. <laughs> so... Do you get to use blueprints, and what makes the blueprints so special? I know that at times we we always try and draw our own blueprint, and so the kids here want to know how does the blueprint work. Blueprints are no longer in vogue, so we don't do them anymore. But we used to do them, so you can make lots of copies of a particular drawing. So back in the days when you did drawings by hand, there was no good way to photocopy them. So you would use a blueprint to make lots of copies. You could reproduce it really easily rather than having to make 5,000 drawings by hand. Oh, Unfortunately, we don't use them at all anymore. <laughs> so You've done the full upgrade in the architect world. <laughs> yes, exactly. We just print PDFs now, which is a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, what kind of challenges are there to designing the inside of a room? What do you think about? Yeah, what do you think about when you're designing it? Well, you have to think about all of the architectural components, like windows, doors, hardware on doors, finishes, paint colors, kitchens, mm -hmm. lots of things to think about. Um, but then you also have to think about the environmental factors, like, natural daylighting, you have to think about how to get air in and out of the building and how to get fans in the bathroom circulating from the bathroom and the kitchen so you can have a fresh, clean interior air quality. A lot of secrets to having a good quality home that we never think about. I've never thought about how the air flows through my home until very recently when it's been getting hotter here in Ashland. I have yes. one air conditioning unit in my living room, and it has, and I have to keep my bedroom door open all the time so the cold air goes through. You should have designed the inside of my building. <laughs> yeah. Now you realize the importance, huh? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> You've renovated the inside of your own home before. What was one of the most rewarding parts? Uh, my personal remodel, I tried to do almost all of the things myself, which was very rewarding and required watching a lot of YouTube videos just to, you know, learn how to do things on the fly. So just knowing that I could figure it out and make it happen by myself really built up a lot of confidence in my ability to do almost anything. That's what we want to build at Science Works. Uh, we're going to start some programs um, for helping students design these kinds of things and being able to maybe renovate their own homes and be confident in building their own cabinets or countertops. If they're, as long as you own your home, if there is 
some areas that you think could be redesigned, we want to encourage that creativity. So that's definitely. <laughs> What was um, the most challenging part, like specifically, like ripping out the tiles or putting in new tiles? Definitely the electrical component of doing the remodel, where it was a little bit scary to do it by myself, and I didn't do it very well. And Mm -hmm. so I think next time I will definitely hire an electrician to do that part of the work. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, that's always so stressful. Maybe no. they could help teach you what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are currently designing apartment complex buildings in Seattle. What are the basic things every home needs? Uh, like we talked about before, walls, doors, kitchen, bathroom. You need at least one window in every bedroom um, just so you can have both an exit route if in case there's a fire, but also you can get natural daylight and air. Hopefully it's an operable window so you can get air inside of your unit from the outdoors. It's funny, I used to play The Sims when I was little and I would always forget to add a bathroom because I would get so into my living room. And then sometimes the house would catch on fire because you didn't have enough windows. And (laughs) then the smoke comes up, it's really stressful. That's why I'm emphasizing these questions. I used to make those big mistakes. Luckily, they were simulated people. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of things to think about, huh? (laughs) Yes. Here at ScienceWorks, we're fans of insect hotels. So even insects need a home. And we don't want to catch their home on fire, so... Have you ever built an insect house, or how would you go about doing that? That's a great question. I have never made an insect hotel, but I love the idea. I would start off thinking about what kind of insect I was building for, so I could figure out how many different spaces we need and how big they need to be to be comfortable for the insects to live in them. You also have to think about Mm -hmm. how they get in and out, and how big their nests are, if they're going to be mm-hmm. living there for a long time, That's and what kind of material you would use to build the hotel is important, too. I've never thought about how the shape and size of the insect does matter. Have you heard of the fairy house? Um, there's a place in Shoreline, kind of north of Seattle, where it's a public park and it's dedicated to building small fairy houses and at oh. uh, that park I always built fairy houses but I didn't think of how big the fairies were because you assume that they can shape shift and they can just go in there and have a fun time you know I think fairies are a little more flexible where they could be any size right yeah, and it will work so. for them <laughs> I'm feeling a little silly now <laughs> So, what kind of building code should future insect apartment architects at home be wary of? I think all of them. You should not have to worry about any type of building code for these insects, other than ones that you've come up with yourself related to how much space each insect needs and how big the unit should be. The so basic building can... code would just be annoying. Don't think about those at all. Well, I think I'm starting to realize, too, that just because it's a good standard of living for people, maybe not for bugs. Yes. What is one last piece of advice you would give to anyone looking to become an architect? Uh, I think it's a great profession, and it is super important that People of different backgrounds and ethnicities are interested in becoming an architect because it's unfortunately a really homogenous profession, and we really need to diversify the workforce. So the more backgrounds and types of experiences we bring into the field is super important. Um, and who use cabinets in different ways can help mm-hmm. out and tell you how better optimal ways to use your space. Yes. Exactly. 
but the nice thing about being an architect is that it's all, you know, unlike being a doctor or a nurse or something, it's not a life or death situation. It's all about just making something magical that didn't exist before. So it's all about the future and the potential, and it's really an optimistic field in that way. So if you like thinking about ways to make the world better and want to implement that, it's a great profession for you. That's that's so exciting. It's helping us build a better daily life for ourselves, like my apartment that needs more air conditioning. (laughs) Exactly, yes. Well, thank you for coming on with us, Lisa. It was really fun to talk to you. And I have a secret. I actually do know Lisa. And if you have heard a baby in the background, that is my little sister. So everybody can say hi to my little sister. <laughs> <laughs> is she crying? Oh, no. <laughs> so I personally know how fun it could be to be an architect. And I know that Lisa does some fun work. And they are currently remodeling their home. So. If you are bored during quarantine and you own your home, you could think about some fun ways to redesign your space. Anyway, I'm Maya, and this is our interview.